Well, where in Massachusetts are you from? Uh, I'm in Central Mass, near Worcester. Oh, that's funny. I'm just outside of Worcester. No way. What town? Oh, it's one of those little sleeping towns no one's ever heard of. Well, I'm in Central Mass. What's the name of the town? The town is uh, Shrewsbury. You're in Shrewsbury? Oh, you've heard of it? I'm from Shrewsbury. No, you're not. I am. I was born in Worcester. My parents moved to Shrewsbury when I was little. I've been there ever since. <laughs> I can't believe we're both from Shrewsbury. Yeah. <laughs> it's Jim Ford. Yep. The small wanted... world. It is a small world, isn't it? Sure. When you meet someone around the world that's from your same neighborhood. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us about your film. That's it. So yeah, it's called Small World. It's a short film. And I like to say it's probably based 75, maybe 80% on a true story. So I'm from Massachusetts, and have you ever traveled? I don't know what your team is, but you know, I like the Red Sox. So maybe you're in California and you're in Florida and you see someone with the Boston hat on. You go, oh, you're from Massachusetts? They go, yeah, yeah, oh, you're from Boston? They go, no, I'm from Worcester. Hey, I'm from Worcester, right? And that's kind of cool, but it usually ends there. And I thought that was kind of fun, you know, when that would happen, but when it started happening in other countries, like Europe, I'd go to, you know, I'd be in Spain with one of my buddies, and would say something like, hey, oh my, are you from the States? Are you from the US? Yeah, whereabouts? Ah, oh, the Northeast. You think the conversation's gonna end there, and then, oh, I'm from it Massachusetts. It keeps drilling down. All right, I'm from Boston. The, the onion just keeps getting peeled. And uh, so eventually, yeah, I was in Spain, this like backwoods part, someplace outside of Malaga. It was non-touristy. And we saw these girls that just had college sweatshirts on. And we weren't trying to hit on them. We were having sangria. We just said hi, and we noticed they didn't have an accent. She said, oh, you from the States? And it, it just kept breaking down to the fact that it was not only Massachusetts, not only was it Worcester, it was Central Mass, it was my buddy's hometown, and it was one street away. They were, uh, I think he was one year older than her, he went to private school, and then she went to public school, and they'd never met. And so, so uh, to me, like with social media and everybody saying they're connected, it's sort of profound that people have to go so far to meet their neighbors now right you know what i mean i like, mean that is a great analogy you have to go so far to meet your neighbor anymore in today's times yeah yeah everybody right? thinks they got friends and they're all connected but they're so distant from these people that you have to travel and so that's what we wanted that's what we wanted to accomplish with this is kind of you know just show how far they actually go so if, if you remember it you know we show the little animation um, but we're kind of proud of the the bar and the scouting process you know I, i've made about 25 maybe 30 short films over the years. And so we always kind of have some on the back burner. And with this one, you know, we had the idea, we had the script, everybody kind of liked it. And Hannah Sloat, who's a Broadway actress, she's yeah. fantastic. Oh, you, yeah. I mean, you were wonderful. Oh, thank, thank you. I mean, thank real, you, yeah. I, you know what? I, it'll probably inflame someone, but you really stood out. Oh, that's, that's you very crushed kind. it. I don't know if it was because you were in that power third of the screen, I don't know, Maybe. but you crushed it. I took direction very well from, okay. from the director. Well, you did right? a yeah. wonderful, <laughs> I mean, you came up against a great actress. Yeah, she's And you, really, you killed it. She was really nice. You thanks. guys both just hit it home. Well, thanks so much for saying that, because, you know, her coming from theater, you know, I, I went to school for theater and studied Shakespeare and all that, and some people don't like to use theater actors. They think they're too big. With me, sometimes a film actor, you know, everything's just, uh-huh. And, and they can be good, but if I get a theater actor, I know, I know they've got the chops. I know that they, it's, it, memorization isn't even an issue. That's, that starts mm -hmm. way back there. Then the work can be done. And so we were able to rehearse. And I said, I don't want us to be thinking about the stuff. It's got to be there so all the subtext happens. And so we started doing rehearsals. And you know, we got this guy, the cinematographer, uh, Tony Shia. He's fantastic. He, he likes comedy. Um, but he likes to direct and, and he makes a living shooting all these commercials and stuff. He's done like Tom Brady commercials and everything. Oh. And, but you know, if it's comedy, he likes it. So I sent him the idea. He's like, oh man, I'm on board. And so we had this great crew. We had the actress. We need the location. And I said, you know, I don't want to rush this. I don't want to use like my uncle's pub. Right. I don't want to use like, I don't want it to look like your buddy's neighbor's you know, bar, right. and then we just put a Corona sign up or something. It's got to feel foreign. It's got to feel far away, too. Like, not just Mexico. Like, I want this to be, like, an obscure island that no one really knows where it is. And so we actually scouted probably 70, 75 bars, maybe even close to 100 bars before we, A, heard yes, but, found, you know, B, found one that we liked. There was a couple sushi places that had cool service bars that might have worked, but they, they said no. They, they didn't like our insurance or our, right. our generators or something. But um, 
we did find this bar in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Uh, and it's not like we were looking, you know, every day, but we just said when we, when, when we it went to a hundred. Right. Yeah, we did. It, we, so that's, you know, uh, over the course of it, that's probably, being a trooper. Yeah. Mass <laughs> we look, Massachusetts, Connecticut, upstate New York, like Long Island, all over the place. And it was in East Rutherford, New Jersey, near MetLife Stadium, which is the Meadowlands, kind of a weird area. And it was a tequila house, H-A-U-X, tequila house. So it's tequila German place. And then upstairs was a service bar that was from Thailand or something. Oh, so that's I was cool. like, it, it, yeah. it, it's not always at foreign, but it's ambiguous. It's just like, you can't quite tell where it is, but it's just way out there. And so we were just out to eat and my wife's like, you should, you should ask, like, just go ask. And I was like, no, these guys look like super serious. This is like a really expensive, you know, big restaurant. They're going to, no, they're going to kill me. Just go and ask. And so I walked up and, uh, you know, I approached the owner and he was like, oh my gosh. He's like, my wife is an artist. She'll love this idea. Where, where do you want? I was like, oh, the upstairs bar, go talk to my wife. And she was like, this is great. And she actually helped. She opened up on the day off or early. Cause I think they opened for dinner. So she opened up before and she, uh, she did some of the set decoration and put some, brought some, you know, uh, Buddha statues and all this. It was just really enthusiastic. And when the patrons came in, I, I said, you know, can you keep the music off and all that? And she actually like told the restaurant to like be quiet and uh, there was no music while we were filming. So we were able to film at this like awesome place and- uh, Location fee, um, insur insurance, did you have to go the full route? Yeah, so, you know, th there's usually a couple routes. There's some people, you know, they, they're kind of uh, hesitant or they're skeptical and they always think something's gonna wrong. And then the other one is when uh, they're kind of excited or maybe yes. they're bored or they want to see it. And that thankfully was the latter. And, and the lady was, uh, you know, one of, one of her sons or some of the family was texting actually like, hey, what's happening? Where are you guys, you know, was, oh, the schedules, you know, we had to push for a little bit. So they, they really were eager for us to do it, which was nice. And, you know, I didn't think they were going to charge us like thousands of dollars, but we really didn't bring up money. You know, we right. had insurance, but they didn't ask for it, which was nice. And uh, at some point they said, oh, just give us a couple bucks. And, I was kind of waiting to see how much that was. And, and towards the end, uh, they came over and they said, hey, just, just buy the whole you know, cast and crew some tequila and, and some food. And so that was nice. You know? Well, you got to do the food anyway. Right, you, you got you to pay. Tequila's optional. Yeah, right, right. You, you, <laughs> but the food, you got to do anyway. So it really worked out for it you. It worked out, yeah. You got to feed them. And the bar them. is, it's unique. It, it does look like it could be in another country. Right, and that's, that's and that, what that, we that, wanted. And the colors and this, yeah, it was great. Like, like the further, the further away you could feel like these two people meet, the better, you know? And it's like, I said, we didn't just want it to be Europe or Mexico. We want it to be like, what is the furthest place you could get to? Like, I want you to take two planes, three planes, a bus, you know, right. a boat to get to this bar, right. you know, where your escape is and, and, and then you bring it back. And so thankfully, you know, when we found this, we probably would have, would have given them a lot. And thankfully they were just really enthusiastic and uh, we, we all had a good time. I don't, I don't know how much the bar bill was. It wasn't a thousand, but, but we had we had some tequila. Well, that's okay. And, and, and we had some fun. And you have memories. And yeah, yeah, we, we had a lot of memories. I think everybody had a good time. And some of my family was able to stop by and, and check it out at the beginning. And, you know, like I said, they, they kept the music off and everything so we could film. But uh, one other cool little detail about it I want to make sure I told you was just to this extra layer because we knew the the script I don't want to say like, oh, it was so perfect or anything. It was just so cute. It was just so packaged. Like the idea mm -hmm. was just show, was so short and sweet. I knew if we filmed it well, it would be nice. And, and we didn't want to kind of cut any corners. So if you remember the opening shot, there's some extras, you know, like you'll see the guy, guys at the bar, you'll see the, you know, there's a couple eating at the back table. There's a waitress, a bartender, all that. It, it's quick. You only see it for like five or six seconds before the guy comes in. Mm -hmm. So we actually did a casting just for the background just a separate casting and we wanted them all to be different ethnicities. We wanted them to all be from different parts of Asia and parts right. of the world. Um, and so someone was from Cuba, someone was from South America, we had someone from Mexico, someone from India, someone was from Taiwan. We had all these different, so if you yeah. look at it quickly, like you, you know it's It foreign. looks international. It looks international. And the bar looks international. So it appears that you shot it wherever you intended right. to shoot it where it was supposed to be. Exactly right, where you just feel like, man, these, these people mm -hmm. went out of them, multiple days for them yep. to get to this bar. And so you, you always see it for like, like I said, five or 10 seconds, but hopefully it's, it's in the subconscious that it like- It is, yeah. it builds the realism of the film. That's, yeah, that's, that's what, what it is. Because you got a short, it's a, it's a short short. Right, right, so, right. Yeah, you were talking, you, you've made 25 or 30 shorts? Yeah, I, I, made, take it? I okay. made a whole bunch ever since I, I was, you know, 
probably 10 or 12 years old. I started, I took an animation class. You know, I was always running around with, with the camcorder filming extreme sports and that type of stuff. And uh, when someone introduced me to, you know, an editing studio, like a, like a, a TV station, I kind of learned how to edit. But I was editing in my parents' basement with, you know, two VCRs. You know, VHS doing the, tapes, yeah. The, with doing the VHS. And taking it on to another tape. And the recording, and we actually, yeah, we, we started this thing. It was, it was almost like a jackass type thing where we would, you know, film stunts and, and do all that stuff. Like, I, you know, I don't know if I told you I work as an actor and a stuntman too in, in New York. And, and we were always filming like these backyard exploits. And they were kind of fun. And, you know, we would do skateboarding and snowboard stuff. But then we would put like skits in, in, in between. And once I learned how to edit, that's when stuff kind of took off. Like the skateboard videos and the snowboarding, like people would watch them just because it was rare to have like videos back then. Like if you went to a party, hey, watch my video. Right. Nobody had, but then once we start putting like the little bits in, and that's how I kind of learned, you know, how to edit a little bit. And I usually like to bring in another editor just for, for another eye, but that's kind of how it started. And then, you know, since working in film and television, you meet these guys and, and you know they, they jump on board and, sure. and it's a nice little collaboration and uh we, we've got a bunch of ones we just kind of finished we kind of wrapped this this other one called test drive test drive short film that one's kind of ended its its festival run last but uh we, we got some stuntmen in there we did a big car crash okay and that which was really ambitious we did a double rollover with uh with no edit and that so that was that was uh did you put roll bars in it no so no? no roll bar so that was the big thing is this guy has worked on he's done two thousand car crashes over his career and he said, I don't want roll bars so I can get out. He mm -hmm. goes, I want to get out. I want to do it a long take. You know, I don't, okay. want, I don't want dynamic yeah. editing. Yeah. And w it was so unique. And so he was able to do this big, elaborate, scary car crash and then get out without mm. himself. He's got this whole harness rigmarole. And he was like, the studios won't let me do it. And so he saw some of my mm. short films and was like, what did that uh, cost? Well, it was, you know, around 10 grand, the, the yeah. budget. But um, a How lot of people- How much was the car worth? Uh, not much. We bought like two it. Two grand, two grand, a yeah, grand, or well, something. You know, th it was tricky to find the car because we didn't want to spend twenty grand on it, but we didn't want to spend the hundred because we, it had to show you up to, to set. Look functional. Yeah. It had to show up to set. It had to get up to forty miles an hour. We were at an auto body shop, and they were grinding me. They were haggling with me, and I said, "Dude, we're crashing it. I'm an independent filmmaker. Come on, you know, I don't have Ben Affleck money. What's up? Right. Like, like, help me out." And this lady was actually at an auto body shop getting parts for her car, and she's like, "I have a car." And I was like, yeah, but it's got to be a standard. It's got to be a manual or something. We, we had a bunch of specific things for it. She's like, no, it is. It is. And I partly thought like she was making this up. Right. And I was like, well, great. Where is it? She's like, okay, here's the thing. And I'm not, I'm not make, making up a word of this. It's behind a Chinese food restaurant in a field. And I go, what? She goes, yeah, the, if you know Central Mass, there's this famous Chinese food place that has this cool bar called the Aku Aku. And she was like, uh, I think there's, no, Dragon 88. That's what it was, Dragon 88. And she goes, yeah, it's behind the Dragon 88 in a field. And I go, what? Why is it there? She goes, well, it was my boyfriend's. It's not, but it, it got in a car crash. It still works. It can drive, but it costs more money to fix it. So we've been trying to sell it, but it'll... It'll drive. Right. So we had to get, so here we are. I'm thinking, you know, oh yeah, De, De Niro's done this. You know, I'm, I'm going with my buddy behind a Chinese food restaurant in a field looking at a car. I said, if this thing gets up to 40, I'll, I'll give it to you right now. And I think she wanted like five or 600 bucks for it. And sure enough, it started, but she didn't have a title. So oh. I go, why don't you have a title? She goes, well, my boyfriend, something like this, he's in jail. I, I don't know if the car was stolen. I don't know what it was, but. <laughs> But so you she, never got a title to so, it? No, then, because I, was I wasn't going to give her the money without the title. So then she actually was like, stay right here. We had to wait. And she left for an hour, came back an hour later with the title. It wasn't her name. It was so, she goes, it's my boyfriend. He's in jail or something like this. I said, okay. So I, I called so a lawyer. I called some other people. And, and they said, yeah, as long as you have the title, it's fine. And she signed it over. And uh, But is she allowed to sign it, though? But it's not her... It would be like a quick claim deed. You'd be able to sign off on someone else's property, like be someone yeah. finding your title to your car and just, right. hey, I'll sell it. And she, well, she had the guy's driver's license. She had, she had all the stuff. And so I called. Oh, I, call, I like it. Yeah, I call. <laughs> I, I like it. I called yeah. the lawyer. I said, is this okay? And I called, it's got some ice. They said, have you got the title? But what we did was we actually had to drive it to my parents' house illegally because it didn't have plates. So we sandwiched it. For, this is independent filmmaking. This is what you got to do. We sandwiched it. We had only had to go two miles to my parents' house because it was thankfully- But you didn't want the cops to see the plate, so, the, so you're going to sandwich between two different cars. So we did that, yeah. right, just to get it from the Chinese food restaurant to my parents' house. 
Uh, thankfully, the, my parents' house is close to the, uh, the Chinese food restaurant field, but it was still like 30, 40 minutes to the location. So, but I had to keep it at my parents' house until we could get everybody's schedule, till we get the stuntman's schedule. And then, so we kept this car and my dad's like, he goes, James, for crying out loud. You know, I'm living in New York and then he goes, how many people have got a potentially stolen car? You know, he's like a firefighter. He's by the book guy. And he goes, I, I go, just a couple weeks, that's it. He goes, you got two weeks. And then, uh, so sure enough, then we had a tow truck come. We towed it from there right. to the location. And the guy was all about it. He's like, I want to help out on this. This sounds like an awesome endeavor. So were you on a government road or a private? And so that was the other thing is it took months to find a location to do this big elaborate car right. crash. And the problem was everybody would either say no or the worst part was they would say yes. And, and then not allow you. A week or two later, they'd talk to their aunt, they'd talk to their, some, you know, their second cousin and they go, what if, what if? And we had insurance. You know, it was just, they just thought the worst. You know, they were excited to hear films. Sure. Oh, great, great, great. But then they think, you know, never before done car crash. Then they got, they would get cold feet and they, they would say no. And then finally a high school friend was like, hey man, I, I know this farmer. She inherited a bunch of land and she's just kind of like hanging out. Like I'm sure she, and she had like a hundred acres and maybe even 200 acres of land. And she was like, absolutely. And I was like, do you need anything? She's like, just get me a bottle of Malibu. She's like, this is fun. She's like, I'm bored, I'm hanging out with my dogs. And so it was kind of like a neighborhood little party. People came out and they watched and uh, we had a couple of- Was it on a road that the car crash happened? So it's, is this an, it's a huge field. Okay. Yeah, like a, like a, a, far, like a farm that right. they're not using. Mm -hmm. And so he was able to get up to speed and do it. And it, it's really kind of cute because I don't want to give too much away, but it's- Don't, a, it's yeah, a, don't it's, give it away. It's, it's, just, a, it's a stunt man who's test yeah. driving a car. You know, I think everybody's going to want to see it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so uh, the a, backstory to it. it. It's got a fun backstory. A lot of work went into another, it's only three minutes, but it's on jimford.com. You can go on my website or just, you could probably Google test drive short film and and it'll come up and it's just action packed. It's so fun, but I believe never before seen stunt where the guy does a double rollover and gets out. And then there's, there's we yeah. got some, some cool little endings. And uh, so yeah, we did at the field. Everybody came out. She only wanted some Malibu, no issues. Yeah. And then the, the tow truck guy was like, hey man, just give me a call when you're done. He's like, I, I kind of want to be a part of a film. The car. Yeah, and he too, I don't know. And you probably got your 500 bucks from the scrap. Yeah, he, the well, scrap he, that was his payment. Yeah, he, he, okay. took, he did it for free. And so okay, he so he took it there and then took it away. Yeah. So $500, great car crash scene, yeah. no CG. No, no, that's this it. This is the real no, deal. No. How many cameras did you set up? So we had a whole bunch, but that was, that was the thing is I go, it's, it's one very take. tempting, it's one take. We have five, all these things, but that was the stunt driver's request is no edit. So we had a million cameras, but I said, you can only take the scrolling wide shot because right. we want to show that it's a human who does the crash and gets out. Right. If you see Fast and the Furious and you see these dynamic, you know, editing, all these wild car crashes, right? And it cuts from camera one to B to five to six to six. We, we've kind of been conditioned to think, oh, that's how you edit for energy or all that. Sure. It's really just to conceal that it's a stunt double yep. doing the thing and that it takes the team a long time. And it can be get, on green screen and it, there's a lot right. of things that can happen. It, it takes a team of people to get them out afterwards yes. because, but this guy's got his own harness. So when he does it, you know, we have behind the scenes footage too. There's these nice featurettes that the guys made where you can see him bouncing in the car, but then he clips himself out. Would you put a GoPro it, in there? And yeah, so we have them yeah. hidden in the back. It's not part of the film, but it's like just, it's just in to there. show. That's great. In, in Do you have that up the, any online? Yeah, those are all, uh, all okay. up there too. I have a, a press kit on my website, you know, on jimford.com. You can actually see test drive and then you can watch and there's behind the scenes footage and we have, you know, stills and all that just so you can tell that it, that it is real. Cause there's some people that watch it and they still think it's fake. They think like, oh, do, did you shrink it? Is it a model car? I've heard everything. I go, no, you really, he really did it. So that's, that's our, um, one of our fun ones. And then the, the one that we just finished though, which uh, maybe next year we'll, we'll screen is called A Boat Time. Okay. A Boat Time and it's a short film that takes place completely on the water. Okay. So we have open water and it's a, it's a fisherman who's alone. He's enjoying the perfect day until ship happens. Okay, until ship, until hap ship happens. Until ship happens. So it's a, that's well, another we'll short, be looking forward to that. Thanks. We had another short comedy and it's very visual right. and another challenging shoot because we had a film on the water. So we had to get scuba divers, yep. second boats, third boats, all this stuff. But just, just to bring you, you know, I love independent filmmaking and nothing against a conversation in a hotel room or a conversation, but like I wanted to 
the setting. You're trying to emulate the bigger films. Yeah, and I, and, and in it, order to do so, you have to take risks, like you did with the rollover in the car, the way you got it there, and everything else, and also push the limits. Push the limits, right? I want it to have a big budget yeah. feel, which it does, because we have these amazing opening shots. But I also want it, kind of the location itself, to be the star right. of the show, not just the the comedy or the writing or the uh, the characters, but like, you know. Visually, I, I feel like it's entertaining for you to be like, "Wow!" Uh, th for the next five minutes, I'm going to live on the water. Right. You know, it's not e not not the average person would be willing to go through the uh, the lengths to what get there. So, so I feel like yes. there's the, another level of engagement when people yeah. kind of respect that. Like, "Wow! How did you film there? How did you get this?" And uh, so we we did that. It was a two day shoot and. Uh, yeah, that was a cool one, a boat time. So that, that'll be the next one. Check it out, jimford.com. That's a really great name, by the way. Pretty all-American, right? It is, yeah, it's all-American. Yeah. It's easy to remember. Yeah. Jimford.com, check his films out. Yeah, and uh, keep an eye there. on this guy, because I think he's going places. We, he's already we, been places, he's going more places. That's right, that's right. right? We'll be making some more stuff, yeah. Thank you. Well, hey, pleasure, man. Thank, Thank you. Lot, yep.